Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be solving the problem maximum prime differences, which we looked at in our last two videos, the superpower of C++ and one problem for C++. But in this video, we're going to be solving it in four different array programming languages. The first is J, then BQN, then Dialog APL, and then finally Jello. So first, let's look at the solution to this problem in J. And if you aren't familiar, or you need a refresher, the essence of this problem is that you're given a list of integers and you're asked to find the distance between the first prime and the last prime. And you're guaranteed that there's at least one prime in your list of integers. And in this case, for our example, we're given a list of five integers. The first prime is two, the last prime is three, and the distance between these two is three. The distance kind of referring to how many indices between the two primes. So. How are we going to solve this in J? It's actually quite easy to solve this in J because there is a built-in function for primes. If you go over to the J Nuvoc documentation page for P colon, there is a primes function, P colon. In the monadic case, given an integer or a list of integers, it gives you the nth prime corresponding to that integer. And in the dyadic case, there is a ton of different variations of this function, which you can customize by basically passing a different integer as the left argument to p colon. So the one that we want is one p colon, which will give you a zero or one corresponding to a false or true for whether or not the number is prime or not. I will leave a link to this documentation in the description down below and to the J Playground, which is what we're using right now to solve this problem if you wanna play around with this after you're done watching the video. So heading back to the J Playground, the one that we want is one p colon. So this is gonna give us back a Boolean mask where the zeros mean the number is not a prime and the one corresponds to the number being a prime. Note that we can play around with this if we want to uh, build up a iota sequence, we can use iota 10, which gives us zero to nine. And then if we do p colon in the monadic case of these 10 numbers, it's gonna give us the 10 first primes. So pretty awesome. Feel free to play around with this if you want. But the one that we want, as mentioned before, is the one p colon. So now that we have this, we want to get the indices corresponding to the ones in this Boolean mask. And luckily enough, J has a function called indices, which is capital I dot. And if we pass our Boolean mask to this, we get back the indices corresponding to the ones, which are one and four. And at this point, we basically want to subtract these two numbers. But for other examples, we're going to end up with a longer list of than just two primes. So we need to grab the first one, the last one, and then subtract them from each other. So in J, uh, first is left brace dot, and last is left colon, left brace colon. And so now we just need to put this into a fork, which is gonna be a monadic function. Our binary function is gonna be minus, and then our second monadic function is gonna be first. And so we put this all together and we end up with our answer of three. So pretty awesome. We can put this into a function called max prime diff and we need to use double braces and we replace our argument with a Y and then we have another double braces. And so now we can go back up here and replace this with max prime diff and we've got our answer three. So fantastic. However, how do we turn this into a tacit solution? So to turn this expression that currently gives us the correct answer into a tacit expression, the first thing we want to do is to put everything but our argument in parentheses and then use our tack. But now we get a completely different answer and that's because this parses incredibly differently. So Let's delete our left fork and our integer for the moment. And now we're just left with a single AGH fork, as they call it. We have an array and a dyadic function and then a unary function, which is just identity in this case. And this gives us back our Boolean mask. So now when we try to add integers here, it does something odd because a two train, this is a three train, so the whole thing is a four train, but this parses to a monadic function, and then we have another monadic function, but this is gonna be the S combinator, and we don't want it to be the S combinator. So if we add cap to our expression on the left, this turns it into a B combinator, which is just unary fu function composition. So now we get back the indices that we want. But the problem with J is that you always end up using this cap, and it's pretty disgusting. 
So now if we go back and add our fork, once again, this fork is not gonna work because this is trying to parse everything to the right here as a unary function, and then this as a binary function to make this the S combinator, which we do not want. Once again, we just want the B combinator. So we need to use another cap to turn it into the B combinator, and that is how you get this to work. So once again, we can assign this to a function. I guess we should do it up here, max prime diff. We can get rid of this outer set of parentheses and this is our, our final solution here, which is pretty awful for a tacit solution. We end up having to use this identity, one cap, two caps, and you don't end up saving that much. And in order for, for it to be more readable, it's kind of nice to have these spaces. So some people might argue you should do this, which would work, but I think this just becomes a lot of line noise. Anyways, the S as the two train in the monadic case and cap, a pretty bad choice in my opinion. However, let's move to BQN to solve this in another array language. So here we are in BQN. Note that BQN does not have a built-in prime. So we took this from Bacon Crate. We didn't have to write it ourselves. We just copy pass it from that website. Link in the description if you want to check it out. And what are we going to do here? So first we're going to use the is prime. We're going to have to call each on this in order to get it to work. Once again, we get our Boolean masks. Now we call the equivalent of indices in J, which in BQN is called replicate. This gives us our indices. And now from here, we just want to build up that same fork. So uh, we can get first by doing the following. That gives you the first value. And then we can build a fork by first doing this. So this just gets us the first twice. So we want to replace this second first with last. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can reverse the list, so compose this with reverse. However, this gets us the correct answer. We can replace this with minus now, and then we have our answers that we're expecting. However, there is an idiom in BQN and APL where you can just do a write reduction. Um, so this is write, and if we reduce using write, it'll give us the last element, which is kind of neat if you think of it. And this is actually if most reductions are linear, but I know in Dialog APL for sure this is optimized to not be linear. It'll just be O1. I'm not sure if that's the case in BQN, but anyways, this is the equivalent of our solution in BQN. However, let's once again look at how to solve this tacitly. So what is the first thing we want to do? We want to just get rid of our braces and our argument, and really the only thing that we need to do is because we have three unary functions here. Unary function, unary function, and unary function. And so if we put the equivalent of cap right here, which is called nothing in BQN, we get our correct tacit solution. So because the two train in BQN is the B combinator, we don't need a cap here. So in J, you would need to put the cap here in order to turn this from an S combinator into a B combinator. Uh, but we don't need to do that because the two train is the B combinator. So we only need one cap. Still not ideal that we have to do this, but it's a lot nicer than J. Moving on to dialog APL. So here we are in dialog APL. We have our unit test. And the first thing we want to do is actually something I've already done, which is to load defund. So I've already done this. But if you load defunds, you get access to a function called pico, which stands for p colon. It's borrowed straight from j. And if we do this, we get the Boolean mask. So you don't have access to this via the language, but it is accessible via the defunds library, which ships, I believe, with all the dialog APL interpreters. From here, we just want to call where, which is the equivalent of indices in j and replicate in bqn. And that gives us our indices. Note that dialog APL is, has one based indexing, but it doesn't matter because we're taking relative differences. And at this point, we want to build up our fork. So this is first, and we want to combine this with our last or right reduce. And note that this becomes underlined. So this is telling us the IDE is telling us that this is an idiom that is recognized because typically a reduction would be linear. 
And if we do this, we should get our answer. So we can, you know, put this in a little function. We can even get rid of the spaces if we want. And that's pretty nice. So how do we make this tacit? Pretty straightforward. We put all of this in parentheses, replace the argument with a identity. And then the way we can do it, or the shortest way we can do it is just to compose the where and the fork. So if we do that, that'll be a compose operator. And this gives us the correct answer. So almost as nice as BQN. Technically, what we're doing is different because there's no equivalent of cap or nothing in APL. We need to use a composition operator. This is basically the B combinator in this case. So we end up with a unary function here, a unary function here, which just forms the B combinator. And two trains in dialog APL do correspond to the B combinator in the monadic case. Last but not least, we're going to head over to Jello, the wrapper around the Jelly language. And here we have our unit test once again, 42943. And luckily, we have an is prime function in our list of functions available in Jello. Now we want to call the equivalent of indices, replicate, and where, which is called IDX in Jello. And now we just want to build up our fork. So we can do this by last minus, is it first? Head? There we go. And we do this, and we end up with our answer. Note that is prime is actually quite slow. It's calling a library called SymPy. And potentially, I could go optimize this in the uh, Jelly backend. But this is quite nice in that most of the languages, or half of the languages that we looked at, both BQN and Dialog APL, don't have a last function but both J and jelly slash jello do. And I think that makes these forks that we're building up quite nice. It's irritating in the BQN case and the dialog APL case where you don't have that symmetry because you have a glyph for first or head, but you don't have one for last. So let's take a look at a comparison of all four languages that we looked at. So here we have them, APL, dialog APL to be specific, J, BQN, and Jello, the wrapper around the Jelly language, technically my fork of it, the Jellyfish language. We've got explicit and tacit for all four of the languages, except for Jello, which only has the tacit one. Pros and cons, in J and Jello slash Jellyfish, you have keywords slash functions for last, whereas in Dialog, APL, and BQN, you have to do the write reduce, which isn't great. In J, you have the two character cap and the s combinator as the two train not great it ends up making the tacit solution almost as verbose as the explicit solution but j does have a built-in for primes which is quite nice bqn does not apl has it through their defunds library but jelly slash jello have all of it they've got the is prime function they've got the last function and they have the ability to not have to worry about you know, two trains as the B combinator or the S combinator. It just has a very comprehensive support for all the combinators via their combinator arity pattern matching. Maybe I'll do a video about that in the future, or you can go check out some of the live streams that I've done on Jelly where I discuss that. Anyways, we'll end this video here. If you have thoughts, comments, questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And we will see you in the next video.